My name is Abul Abbas. I'm currently a professor of pathology and the chair of the Department of Pathology at the University of California in San Francisco. Talking about basic immunology, I think the, the thing, um, I, I think in every fast moving field like immunology you have a problem and the problem is that there's a lot of information that's coming out. There's lots of journals, lots of scientists working in the field, lots of experimental and other results being, uh, being reported and it's bewildering for the uninitiated. If a student, medical student tries to read the literature and understand it, he or she won't have a clue what's meaningful and important and what's uh, a side issue. And so the, th the, the one thing we've tried to do in this book is uh, glean the, the kernels, the key messages, pull them out of this mass of information that's out there. In order to get a simple message across, you can't get into the nuances. You said, this is the way I think the system works. And you just present it that way and, and don't get complicated. So I think that's what the key to this book is that it's simple. It's simple, it avoids the controversy, controversies and the complexities, and it says this is the way we think the immune system works. The second important aspect of this book, which I, I like a lot, personally, is that everything is uh, we try to relate to disease. This is the way the immune system works, and if it is not working, this is the disease that people get. And we don't talk about mouse experiments, we don't talk about cell cultures, we talk about people problems. And I think medical students relate to that too, because this is what they're seeing in their day-to-day -day life, they're seeing sick people and they want some understanding of why people are sick. So I think both aspects, the simplicity and the connection to disease, really make this uh, the kind of, I, I always wanted to write something like this. So it's Cellular and Molecular Immunology. It's the seventh edition that came out about a year and a half ago. And that's the most recent version. So, um, the seventh edition uh, that of that book has gone through some fairly substantial changes. Uh, there were chapters that um, were really just catalog of information in the old, uh, in the in previous editions, which didn't read very well. So we eliminated those and we spread the information where it belonged. But they were more important than that, they were topics that were covered in multiple places in previous editions because of the way it had evolved. And what we needed to do was to pull them out of multiple places and make them uh, a single coherent discussion. So we've got three new chapters in that book which didn't exist uh, in previous editions. And uh, I, I look at it and I think it's a really pretty significant improvement over the past. Uh, I think most medical students, you know, medicine is such a big field that it's difficult for most medical students to focus on everything. And so part of it is you gotta, you, you've got to know enough about everything to be a functioning physician and to take care of business, exams, etc., etc. But most medical students fairly early in their careers get excited about something. Whether it's immunology or neuroscience or cancer or some topic in medicine. And I tell them if you're really excited about it, get into it in some depth. Go beyond the textbook, go beyond the three-week course. Take a year off and spend it in the lab, you know do a project, I mean, uh, really get involved um, in a serious way. And so, and most medical students actually hear that from lots of us on the faculty. So I think something like 75% of medical students at UCSF uh, take at least five years to finish their MDs because they're all doing other things, projects, etc., in various aspects. 